Hi, my name's Andy Orford and I'm a strength and conditioning coach who has a real interest and also a specialism in agility training. Uh, so throughout this video today, what we're going to do is just show you a, a few ways of which you can use the crazy catch as a training tool to train agility. But firstly, I need to just explain a little bit about the complexities of what is agility training. <laughs> Most training really only replicates the physical side of agility training, but there are other elements that are really important as well, namely visual and cognitive. So you actually have to react to a stimulus, you actually have to see it, and then you have to process it in your brain. So you actually need to think, well, what decision or what movement I'm going to make based on what I've seen. And then finally, you have the physical output. So that's whether you change direction or you, you, you kind of move in a different direction as well. In most sports, you can name people that, that probably aren't as physically gifted as, as some others, but still are able to cope with the same speed um, uh, that the game's played at, and, and we have that in badminton quite, quite a bit as well. So what is it about them that they're able to keep up with the same speed but aren't as physically gifted? So the answer lies in the fact that agility is made up of three components. There's a visual component, so you've got to be able to see um, a, a stimulus or reaction. There is also a cognitive component, so you've got to decide what movement that you're, you're going to take or what action is going to take place. And then finally, the third bit, there's the physical um, actual action, so your ability to move, your explosive power, being able to move off of the mark. So it's those three things that make up agility. And so rather than just stay with the one thing that's just the physical part, the other thing that we need to do is try and train the other two components. So the great thing with the crazy catch is that we can use um, the crazy catch as a tool to train each one of those components individually, the, vi the visual, cognitive and physical component, or we can use it that we can train all three of them together. Okay, so what we're going to do now is going to take each one of those components in isolation, show you a couple of drills and explain why it's quite useful to do them in isolation. And at the end, we're going to show you a couple of clips where we put the whole thing together and, and show you the visual, cognitive and physical uh, aspects in play all together in some conditioned games using the crazy cat. So another part of, and use of the crazy catch is in skill development. So what most coaches tend to do, especially at the early stages, is we'll throw you a ball and you have to kind of react to it, but it'll be thrown at the same height and the same speed. Now here you've got a use of the crazy catch where in football you've got a guy hitting the, the ball against the net and it's reacting in different ways. So we're using the insane side and he's having to control it in different aspects, either using his knee, his foot, his chest, and then hitting the ball back against the crazy catch. So this is more akin to how the ball is going to react at you in a game because you're going to come at lots of different angles and lots of different speeds. In sport, about 85% of the information is actually taken in through the eyes. But the eyes do a number of different things. They track objects, they give you a perception of depth, and they give you peripheral vision as well. So we're going to show you um, a couple of drills that will just isolate sort of the eyes in terms of training using the, the crazy catch. In this drill, we just get the athlete to simply sit on their knees um, with their coach behind them. It's best to put a little bit of padding under the knees because it can get a little bit uncomfortable. The reason why we get them on their knees is the fact that they can't actually move, so it takes away the physical component and highlights the visual aspect of the drill even more. The coach is simply going to throw the ball at the net and the athlete has to respond and catch the ball. The variations of this drill is just basically getting the athlete to move nearer to the crazy catch, so it's actually the reaction time is a lot quicker or you could just ask them to only catch the ball with their right hand or only catch it with their left hand. So the next aspect of agility we're going to talk about is the cognitive side. So once you have processing the information either through your eyes or some of the other senses, your brain actually has to make a decision about what way to go. 
Now, if you've made the wrong decision, it doesn't matter how physically agile you are, you will simply not make the play. You won't get to that ball, you won't get to that shuttle. But there's a kind of bit of an interesting point here that actually most top performers don't use their brain while they're actually playing. They just actually get into a flow and through experience they kind of know where to be and they make the right decisions. So sometimes you don't want the brain to work actually that much and we just want to get people into a flow. So here's a very quick example. So if I throw this ball up into the air and you guys have to tell me how many times it actually rotates round, okay? So just have a little look. So the fact that you've done that, you've had to watch the ball and concentrate. So two words or, or two sentences that you hear a lot when you hear coaches' training sessions. The very fact that we tell someone to watch the ball, their brain is working overtime and they're probably not concentrating well enough because their, their brain's working too hard. If you give them something to stimulate, to, to look at, to, to visually keep a hold of that's out of their brain, so they're trying to track a ball or using a visual ball to see what kind of color they can see or what colored square it is, then their brain is actually active and, and searching, doing other stuff than, than thinking too hard. And it's easier to get people in the flow that way. Okay, in this drill, which is another cognitive drill, the coach or two coaches stand behind the athlete and they're gonna throw two balls at the crazy catch. What the athlete has to do is differentiate which ball that they need to actually catch. So in this one, we're going to use the vision ball. So once the two balls are thrown at the net, the athlete has to ignore one of the balls and, and catch the one that you want them to. So in this case, it was the vision ball. So the information is processed at the same time through the eyes, but you actually have to make a decision about what ball that you're going to go for. So the last element that we're going to talk about is the physical element. So it is a massive important part of agility, but from what we've just told you, if you don't get the visual aspect right, so you don't simply see the, the shuttle, the ball coming towards you, you're not gonna be able to, to, to be very good at agility. If you actually make the wrong decision, so go the wrong way or uh, play the wrong type of shot, then again, you're not gonna be very good at agility. So it's really important that you get those two bits into your training as well as this physical aspect. Here we're going to show you a couple of drills that are just going to highlight more the physical aspect of agility training. Okay, in this drill we're going to actually highlight the physical aspect of agility a little bit more. So we're utilising two crazy catches and we're utilising two coaches. They're going to throw a ball alternately at one or other of the crazy catches and the athlete's got to react to it, making sure that they move just that little bit further, hence highlighting the physical aspect of agility that little bit more. So the last drill that we're going to show you is, is a little bit of a game that we've devised um, and it's, it combines all of the aspects of agility together. So there's a visual component, there's a decision making component and there's a physical component. So simply you need to mark out a court, you play a game, you have to throw the ball at the net, move out the way, your partner has to catch it, throw the ball um, against the net, part, the other partner catches it. So you, you kind of have to rotate round. So it's got the visual aspect because you're having to track the ball. It's got a decision-making aspect because you've got to make decisions about how hard you're going to throw it, where your opponent is, what kind of pace you're going to put on the ball. And there's a physical component because you've got to react to it, push off and change direction. So just mark out a court, decide what you're going to play up to and go and have some fun. Okay, with this drill, we've got the athletes doing the one minute challenge. This is where they're standing, but they're practically standing still and just throwing the ball against the crazy catch and standing about two meters away. We give them a minute and we see how many times that they can catch the ball within the minute. Current world record stands at 71. So this is where we use the crazy catch in prehab. So we've got an athlete standing on one leg and throwing the ball. The ball's going to react in different ways and the athlete's got to react to it. So it's good proprioceptive feedback for the athlete um, and will help in terms of 
starving off any potential injuries. So that's it. We hope you enjoyed some of the video clips and, and the uses of the crazy catch in, in agility training. Um, now just go away and have some fun with it. Come up with your own games. You're only limited by your imagination. So just go and have some fun. Just go and play. Hi, I'm Nathan Robertson, Olympic badminton medalist. Uh, I've used the crazy catch now for a year or two. I think it's a great tool um, for training. Not only is it great for reactions, catching skills, all different sorts of sports, but it's also uh, incredibly good fun, as you can see from the video. Um, it's great with friends, and you know you don't have to do it for long to get a really great sweat on and a great workout. So I'd definitely encourage you to uh, try out the crazy catch and have some fun. So what do you think is the best thing about the crazy catch? Um, I think the best thing is that it's really fun and enjoyable to play. Um, I love, absolutely love playing it. It always makes me really happy. Um, and how do you think it's going to benefit your badminton? Um, it improves my reaction times and also my muscles because it makes me load because I never know which way it's going to go. Excellent. I like the crazy catch because it's really fun to play and you can play lots of different games.